Okay, now we want to convert uh, polar equations into rectangular equations. Here's the three formulas that we had from the very beginning of this section we talked about. The first two we've already looked at already, but we also have this one as well. What the idea here is, is you want to convert um, this over into rectangular coordinates, which means that I don't want to have r's and thetas. I want to change everything over into x's and y's. So I need to look at what is here that I can use to plug in there to change it out so that way I can get everything all in terms of X's and Y's. Now, I, I notice that there's a sine theta here and I have a sine theta there, but I need to have an R in front of it. So therefore, um, I can't put anything in there for right now. So one technique that you might want to do in some of these problems is you may need to multiply the equation by something to where you can actually plug in values. Now, if I had an R in front of the sine theta, that would be great because then I could put in a y and change it out. So I, I want to purposely take this equation and I'm going to multiply both sides by r. And the reason why, the only reason why I want to do that is because that way I get an r next to the sine theta and I can put in a value for that. So I get r squared is equal to r plus r sine theta. So now I get that uh, into, into that form. What I need to do next is see what substitutions I can make for each one. So I see an r squared right here and I have a formula for r squared. That's going to be x squared plus y squared. That goes in place of the r squared there. That's on the left hand side of the formula. Now, I don't have a formula for r, but let's look at that. If I have x squared plus y squared equals r squared, what I could do is if I square root both sides, then I would get an expression for r by itself. I would get the square root of x squared plus y squared, and that's actually what I'm going to put in for regular r, the square root of x squared plus y squared. We're not able to square root each of these separately because we got a plus sign separating that, so this is actually as far as I can go, and I got that again by just simply taking the square root of both sides for this equation here. Now that I have that, next I have an r sine theta, and that's going to be uh, just y. Now, depending on who your teacher uh, is for this class, I'm not sure how uh, that, that instructor would want to have you write your answer. Um, sometimes they don't like you to have square roots in the answer. If there's a way you can get rid of the square root, you can go ahead and do so. This one, there's not really a whole lot you can do here. Can't really solve for y because you'll have y on both sides of the equation. If you try and square everything, it's going to make it even messier. So therefore, I'm just going to go ahead and leave the answer like that. Would this be a rectangular equation? The answer is yes. It's rectangular. Because we only have x's and y's in there, we have no more r's and thetas. That's the whole idea. You want to eliminate r and theta and get x's and y's only. So that's it. That's going to be the answer for part A. I'll leave that as my answer. A lot of times, usually, uh, particularly if you do these kind of problems in an online homework environment, usually answers like this will be multiple choice. So just look at the multiple choice ones and choose which one works. You may have to move things around, maybe there might have been x squared plus y squared minus y equal to square root, that's possible, you may have an answer, so you might have to rearrange. So these kind of ones, and if I give this problem to you in my class, going from polar to rectangular, I would give you this on a test as a multiple choice because there's different ways that you could write your answer. Now let's take a look at b. b is r equals 4. Now, I could go ahead and put in the square root again, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to square both sides of the equation. And the only reason why I want to square it is because then I can just go ahead and put in x squared plus y squared. I don't need to worry about a square root because that makes the problem look more complicated if you have a square root in there. So by squaring both sides, I can just put in directly x squared plus y squared equals 16. And you notice that that would just be the equation for a circle. So r equals 4 in polar translates into a circle that's centered at the origin that has a radius of 4. Radius of 4, that's what basically what uh, this one says. So uh, we've converted those, so now let's take a look at a couple more parts. Okay, for part C we have a fraction. Best way to do these kind of problems is to clear the fraction out first. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 minus cosine, or I can cross multiply either one. So I get r times 3 minus cosine theta is going to equal 3. I want to distribute the r into each one. I get 3r minus r cosine theta is going to equal 3. And then I want to look for things I can plug in. Now, uh, the r by itself, whenever you have r by itself, you can always write that as the square root of x squared plus y squared. Again, you just take this equation here, square root both sides that we did before in the previous part. 
Uh, and then this one, R cosine, that's a direct substitution. We can just put X in there uh, for the whole thing, for R cosine, all that turns into an X, and we get this. Uh, now, depending on what kind of homework system that you have, you, it may, if there's a way that you can eliminate the square root, usually that's how they're going to have the answer written. Again, it's going to be multiple choice, so probably they want you to eliminate the square root. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and do that on this one. Let's eliminate the square root. I'm going to add x to both sides of the equation. I get 3 square root x squared plus y squared is going to equal x plus 3. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3 to get this. I want to isolate the, the square root, and I get x plus 3 over 3. And then I'm going to square both sides to get rid of the radical. And I would get x squared plus y squared uh, is going to equal this whole thing, x plus 3 over 3, that whole thing squared. So that would be a way that you could actually eliminate the square root um, if possible. And, and so and there, there could be more you could do depending on what the answer choices are. I'm just going to go ahead and stop here just to show you that there are sometimes ways that you can eliminate the radical. Uh, when we did the uh, part A uh, of this problem, there wasn't really a way we could eliminate that square root, but in this case there was a way we can get rid of it. So generally um, the answers you'll see for multiple choice probably won't have the square root written in there. Um, so you could take it down to here and manipulate other ways. So now let's look at one more part. Okay, last one, part D. Convert this over into rectangular. Uh, I have a 2 sine and a 4 cosine. I'd like to have an r in front of both of those so I can change it either into an x or a y. So that's the first thing I want to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by r. So I'm going to do r. I have r equals 2 sine theta minus 4 cosine theta. Just multiplying that through um, by r. You'll get r squared is going to equal 2r sine theta minus 4r cosine theta. So now that I've done that, I have r's next to each. I can actually use all three of these formulas I'm going to put in uh, both sides. So r squared, I do have that formula here. That's going to be x squared plus y squared. And I have 2r sine theta. That's going to be 2y. And I have 4 times r cosine. r cosine is going to be my x. So now I have uh, this written out. Okay. So in this, that, that definitely would be... Uh, something written in the form of rectangular, but a lot of times when you look at problems that are done with multiple choice, you're probably not going to see that as an answer. You get some other weird answer that looks like a circle. So I want to go ahead and show you how they would actually get that answer because most likely when you do these online, if they have a multiple choice, you probably won't have that as your answer. So we need to go a little bit further with that. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to move everything over and get everything equal to uh, zero. And I'm going to leave some spaces because this is actually going to involve a problem that ha we have to do some complete the square on this one. So uh, x squared plus 4x, I'm going to leave a space. And then I have plus y squared minus 2y, leave a space. And then that's going to equal a 0. So I'm leaving some spaces in here because I want to do the complete the square steps. Recall, when you do complete the square, you want to take that number divide it by 2 and then square it. So if I take 4 divided by 2 and you're always going to divide by 2 when you do complete the square and you're always going to square it when you do complete the square. Divide by 2, we get 2. Square it, you get 4. Now I have to add 4 over here. Make sure we add it to both sides of the equation to make sure the equation is balanced. This, divide that by 2, you get negative 1. Square it, you get positive 1. So then we get a plus 1 over here. By doing that, we create some, a perfect square that we can factor. So this one and this one, we're going to factor those separately. When you factor it, whatever you, whenever you take this term and divide it by 2, that's the number that goes inside here. So 4 divided by 2 was 2. That goes here. And then this other one, we took this middle term. When we divide that by 2, we got negative 1. So that's what goes inside there. Then that's going to equal 5 when you add all this up after the equal sign. So therefore, this is probably what you're going to see as a multiple choice. You'll probably see something written out in this form. So again, this kind of thing is actually uh, a type of circle. It would be a circle uh, at negative 2, positive 1 would be the center of that circle. And that's, that would go along with this. So this polar equation means exactly, this looks exactly like this and rectangular.